in light of the recent uh, day's events, uh, let's analyze uh, the weather patterns and the impact of uh, possible climate change. We're speaking to Jasper Knight from the Verts Geography, Archaeology, as well as Environmental Studies Department. Jasper, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Of course, a lot of people are drawing inferences and saying all kinds of things with regards to what we saw at the weekend. What is your take in terms of analysis about where we've been when it comes to severe weather patterns and where we are now? Yeah, well, that's a really important point because, of course, uh, we do experience snowfall in this country. Um, but uh, here we've just had an unusually heavy uh, snowfall event. Um, but there was full warning of this event. There was a uh, weather advisory um, put forward by the South African Weather Service on Wednesday, highlighting that we should anticipate uh, very cold temperatures and snowfall uh, across the regions where we did ex indeed experience it. Um, so in in terms of forewarning, those things were there. Um, but the weather pattern that took place uh, represents a fairly common uh, weather system called a cut-off low, uh, where we have a weather system coming into the country from the, the south. And this usually brings um, uh, cold temperatures as well as uh, moisture. And it's really that uh, critical combination that led to uh, snowfall over the higher ground that we experienced at the weekend. So it's a relatively common feature. Um, what was uh, perhaps unusual is the timing of it at this uh, time of the season. And of course, the um, substantial amount of snow that fell across the country. I'm going to get to, to, to the issue of, you know, the, 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 the warning systems um, in just a moment. But I want to stay with something that you just said at the end there. Um, the timing of it, of course, being, you know, coming into question for a number of people. And they wonder, is this an impact of climate change or not? Well, uh, it's very likely to be so, but uh, the point is with just one event, it's actually very difficult to draw any meaningful conclusions. It's really where we have a whole series of events over a longer period of time, where we can begin to identify the possible imprint of climate change in changing the dynamics of weather systems. Um, but what we do know, especially from climate models, is that under climate change, uh, weather patterns uh, should become more erratic and more varied variable. And uh, really, we have seen a uh, very similar variability of our climate over recent years. For example, the, the KZN floods uh, uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, so here we're beginning to build up a picture of more variability with respect to weather and climate events. And that seems to be a fingerprint of global climate change. So what does it then mean, particularly when it comes to policy direction? Because we often hear um, of policies that are still being developed, conversations that are still taking place between various countries, but also here at home as well. How, how quickly do we now need to move towards implementation versus just conversations around how we should be better prepared? Yes, well, I mean, that's, that's of course, the big question. How do we uh, kind of uh, translate uh, policy into practice and how do we develop effective policy in the first place? I mean, one overarching issue is the fact that we need to uh, increase the resilience of both society and our infrastructure supporting society and uh, increase the resilience of the physical environment to withstand extreme events. So that might be storms, or snowfall or things like sea level rise. But this uh, requires um, effective government policy in the first place and government departments to work together. And often those two things don't happen very well. And that's a real limitation. So we know that these things are coming, but we do need action in order to put in place systems and policies so that we can um, hopefully minimise the negative impacts of these events in the future. And can our infrastructure take it, given the fact that there's been quite a lot of focus on it? And, um, you know, you'll, you'll even hear about how in some parts it's crumbling. Yes, well, the short answer is no. Uh, the infrastructure, the built infrastructure, such as our roads um, and housing systems and uh, communication systems, as well as things like water and electricity, as we know, just isn't fit for purpose. Uh, so this doesn't just require, you know, maintenance and investment. It also needs to be uh, developed um, in a way that it is fit for the future. And if we just tinker around with what we've already got, 
we are not going to help ourselves going forward. So this requires strategic thinking uh, for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Let me go back to something you said earlier on as, you know, we talk about what lessons then do we learn, especially from the events that we saw this weekend. I was just in conversation right now with a teacher who was stranded with some, you know, primary school pupils who were heading to, to Durban, for example, and she was talking about the fact that all they were aware of was the, you know, the fact that there'll be rainfall um, and it's go it was going to be quite cold. But they were not talking about the issue of snow, for example. So when it comes then to, you know, the early warning systems, the warnings that are being put out there, what else can we do to ensure that communities are better armed with information? Well, I think uh, the information uh, channels, such as obviously SABC and other media outlets, you know, do a pretty good job in uh, communicating uh, these kinds of uh, warnings where those are available. But the real um, weakness in the chain of um, uh, communication is uh, strategies at uh, municipal and provincial levels. And the reason for this is that uh, it's these sectors of government that have ultimate responsibility when a big um, event affects a local area. But very often they don't have technical expertise, they don't have infrastructure in place, they don't have knowledge, and this is a real limitation. Um, so here, for example, with this um, uh, a particular snowfall event. I mean, I do wonder whether or not there were effective um, strategies in place uh, to manage this and similar events. So uh, when the road was closed, why weren't there diversions? I was actually stuck on that road on the N3 last night with um, a whole bunch of students. I was on a field trip and we were stuck and there was no information at all. So why uh, wasn't there the full planning um, by um, municipal and provincial governments in order to ensure that when these events take place, and it's a case of when, not if, uh, they have effective uh, management structures in place. So they actually need a lot of skills and techn technical expertise, which currently they just don't have. How long were you stuck for? Well, luckily, uh, we kind of got got to um, uh, the, the long line of traffic and uh, in our, our four by fours, we managed to reverse around and uh, find our own diversion. But of course, nothing was marked. There was no information. Sure. And uh, that, of course, is, uh, you know, as you say, quite concerning because at that moment you need, um, you know, proactivity in order to ensure that people know exactly where to go and you try and prevent a catastrophic situation there. But Jasper, thank you so much for your time.